you know, it's kind of weird that you hold a position at university and and you have and it is named after the person that um your wife your ex-wife is now married to not impossible the property is low and this is something that if you are interested in the person you would know about them Hello, this is Momo with another episode of Round the Fire with Momo. This is going to be a quick one. I want to talk about some of uh, the instances in which ChatGPT just makes shit up. I don't want to be ungrateful. Actually, I'm really, really impressed by ChatGPT and it has blown my mind. I use it at work, at home, for solving problems, for finding solutions to, you know, different um excel formulas to study things it has become it has replaced google search in so many uh, in so many instances however there are some real fuck ups that i don't know a system this smart why how a system this smart can make such such mistakes i'm going to go through some of them and first i'm going to start start with something positive uh, to show my gratefulness to it and then we will go to the fuck-ups one of the concepts that i've been grappling with a lot was how really public key encryption cryptography works so i i specifically asked chat gpt to explain it to me in simple terms and this is the uh, an answer i've got Public key encryption is a method of encrypting messages using two keys, one for encryption and another for decryption. The encryption key is made public and widely known, while the decryption key is kept private by the recipient. When someone wants to send an encrypted message, they use the recipient's public key to encrypt it. This was a very important part for me, and that was when I started to grasp the concept of public key cryptography better. This was very important that the sender actually uses the receiver's public key to encrypt the message. And that's why the receiver, without exchanging any key, can decrypt the message because they have the key that has produced that public key. Uh, continuation of the code and only the recipient's private key can be used to decrypt and read the message. This provides confi- confidentiality and security as only the intended recipient can a- access the contents of the message. This was an instance where I just sat down and chatted with chat GPT as a, as a kind of study session. As if you've gone to your professor and spending some time with them and asking questions back and forth and you can interact with them. It was so so different from just chatting on, searching on Google, finding results from this tab to the other tab. Everything was in one place. And this chat lasted for hours. Um, I mean, 45 minutes or one hour the first time. And then... Um, I continued that chat on other occasions. So this this is this system is really really smart and has helped me a lot uh, when I want to learn things, like when I want to research things. But now let's get to some of the uh, fuck ups that I really find funny. You know, if you are like me and spend hours watching videos about the history of excel and spreadsheets how they came uh, came about and stuff like that you would understand me and you would understand that people exist who ask such questions that uh, when was excel created who created it what's the history of it i know something about this its history i've gone the ra- down the rabbit hole of watching the videos of the creators of the first spreadsheet sheets and how they came about, how they were killer app. So I was specifically asking about Microsoft Excel. And then 
it gave me the name that Charles Simoni, if I'm pronouncing the name right, was involved in the creation of Excel. And the name rang a bell. As a person who, who is involved in uh, Richard Dawkins' tra translation project, I knew that Richard Dawkins held a place at the university for the popular popularization of science. And this was called... It, it was named after a person with a similar name. So I got curious. And the position is the Simone Professor for the Public Understanding of Science. Uh, so I got curious after getting the answer regarding Excel and Charles Simone being the, one of the creators. I asked this, is there a relation between the name Charles Simone and Richard Dawkins? Yes, Charles Simone and Richard Dawkins are related through marriage. Interesting. Charles Simone is a Hungarian-American computer scientist and software engineer who worked for Microsoft and played a key role in the development of Microsoft Excel and other software products. Richard Dawkins, on the other hand, is a British evolutionary biologist and science writer who is best known for his work on evolutionary theory and popular science books such as The Selfish Gene and The God Delusion. Charles Simone was married to Lisa Perstader, if I'm pronouncing the name right, who was pre previously married to Richard Dawkins. That's uh, kind of, you know, um, I know a lot about Richard Dawkins for my own good. And if it was something going on, that had come to pass in his life, I probably would have known about that. Maybe people uh, from his camp or the people who criticize him had brought it up somehow. Or, you know, it's kind of weird that you hold a position at the university and, and you have, and it is named after the person that, um, your wife, your ex-wife is now married to not impossible the property is low and this is something that if you are interested in the person you would know about them so it came to me as a surprise I mean in this uh, chat uh, chat GPT gave me some information about Excel that I didn't know for example it uh, told me I learned that uh, actually, Microsoft Windows came after Microsoft Excel, and Excel first ran on IBM and Mac computers. If there's a mistake in these pieces of information, blame it on ChatGPT. But if they are correct, they are interesting. Uh, they are interesting things to know. Continu continuation of the code. Simone and Peirce daughter were married from 1991 to 2008, and uh, Dawkins served as Simone's best man at their wedding. I mean, this part is even more <laughs> weird. Despite their differences, uh, different areas of expertise, Simone and Dawkins have both made significant contributions to their respective fields and are highly respected in the scientific community. When the next sentence started with, with despite their, after that, I want, I expected to hear something about uh, this triangle, this uh, love triangle, but it wasn't related to that. And I got curious. Is it really something that I never knew about Dawkins? So I asked another question. So Richard and Charles were married to the same woman, I asked. Uh, an exclamation mark would have been fitting, but well, it's a machine, maybe it doesn't interpret um, exclamation marks, though I know that it does uh, interpret um, emojis, which is really impressive. I and uh, chat GPT says, I apologize for any confusion. I made an error in my earlier response. Charles Simone was not married to Richard Dawkins' wife. Rather, he was married to Lisa Purse daughter who was not previously married to Dawkins. Okay, it can even detect where it has made the error and correct it. So from where this mess come up, if it can search through it, response, its responses and realize that it is not a correct answer, why do 
I, as a human, have to point it out when it has access to all those pieces of information and can formulate the answer. And if there is an error, it can detect it. Why can't it detect it before providing the answer? Which I find amusing. Well, in the previous response, it had uh, clearly told me that they were related through marriage. So I asked the question again, because, well, that was not correct. It was They didn't know each other because they were married to the same woman. And then also Dawkins became the best man, uh, man at a wedding between his ex-wife and another man. So I asked this question. So how did these two get to know each other? I mean, Richard and Charles. Richard uh, Dawkins and Charles Simone met in 1980s through their mutual involvement in the technology industry. At the time, Dawkins was working as a a professor of zoology at the University of Oxford, while Simone was a software engineer and programmer who had joined Microsoft Corporation in 1981. Well, you know that. Where does them being related through marriage come from? Here's another example. I, I've been listening to Eminem's Venom a lot recently. And there was this video that's shot uh, in the Empire State building. So I got curious how much it cost. And I asked ChatGPT about um, the video. First, it was talking about the music video that was based on the images from the movie. And then uh, I wanted to know more. I made my question more specific to ask about uh, that video. When did they create the Empire State video? I'm sorry, but I'm not sure which video you are referring to as the Empire State video. It mistook it for the title. Well, that's understandable. If you could provide me with more information or context about the video you are asking about, I may be able to assist you better. The music video of Menem, um, I said, and that was shot in the Empire State. I apologize for the confusion in my previous response. However, to clarify, Eminem's music video for Venom was not shot at the Empire State Building. The video from Venom was actually shot in locations in several areas of uh, New York City. So it shows that it is talking about the other video. So I ask another question, clarifying myself and providing more context, I say. But there's a performance of him back in, in 2018 because I wanted to check whether it is before ChatGPT's cutoff or after that. As you know, the cutoff was in September 2021. I double checked and I made sure that, yeah, it is really before 2021. It was way back. And I asked, but there's a performance of him back in 2018 before you your cutoff where he perform, performs Venom from the Empire State Building sponsored by Google Pixel 3. Do you happen to know about that? And then I apologize for the confusion in my area of responses. You are correct that there is a performance of Eminem's Venom that was filmed on top of the Empire State Building. The performance was sponsored by Google and was used to promote the release of Google Pixel 3 smartphone in 2018. The performance was filmed on October 5, 2018, which was also the day of the release of the Venom movie. So it knows all, uh, knows all these details, but when I am asking it on the same chat about Venom, it suddenly gets confused. In the meantime, I just remembered some other examples that I found amusing, so I want to share them with you. Here we go. So, uh, in the uh, continuation of some of my questions, I'm going down the rabbit hole of things I was asking. I became curious and asked this question, who are some of the influential writers who used opium or mixes of the drugs with opium? It's uh, uh, Samuel and Taylor Coleridge. Coleridge was an English poet and philosopher, and at the end it says, Coleridge wrote about his experiences with opium in his autobiographical work, Confessions of an English Opium Eater. I was like, wow, I had read about Coleridge back at university during my BA. I'd never encountered this. Interesting. 
Then I continued re reading and it was Thomas de Quincey, if I'm reading the name, her name right. And de Quincey, de Quincey was an English uh, essayist and literary critic who is best known for his book, Con Confessions of an English Opium Eater. So <laughs> in one response, one book attributed to two authors. Then I asked this question with a bit of tongue in cheek who's the author of Confessions of an Eng English Opium e Eater? The author of Confessions of an English Opium Eater, e Eater is uh, Thomas de Quincey. The book was first published in 1821 and is classical English literature. And then I uh, objected above you attributed the book to both the Quincy or the Quincy and Coleridge though it's written by the, the Quincy because in the meantime I checked it on Google so I was certain who had written it I apologize for the confusion my earlier message you are correct in that confessions of an English opium eater was written by Thomas the Quincy not Samuel Samuel Taylor Coleridge I must have in it in it Certainly made an error in my response. Thank you for bringing it uh, to my attention. No problem. But I, I'm really curious to know how this error was made. And one book was attributed to two authors, while it quote unquote knows a lot about that book. Another one. I'm going down the rabbit hole of. Uh, alchemy and I asked about some films with the theme of alchemy one of the examples one of the recommendations it made was The Alchemist 1983 this film is based on the novel by Polo Colo and tells the story of a shepherd boy so in 1983 so it is years almost a decade before I was born but I remember clearly that The Alchemist became very well known when I was a teenager. And that was when I read the book. So I got curious and I was like, really? Was it written way before 1983? And a film had been made based on that. And only then it became so trendy and everyone was talking about it. When was Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist got published? Paulo Coelho's novel The Alchemist was first published in Portuguese in 1988. So five years after the movie. And then uh, it gives a lot of information about that. And then I ask, but you said that the movie of the same name was produced in 1983. This movie cannot be based on that, on the book. I apologize for the confusion. Chat GPT says, you are correct that the 1983 film The Alchemist is not based on Polo Coelho's novel, novel of the same name. So uh, these are some of my um, top examples of its fuck-ups, which are really um, primitive. I don't know why it makes such mistakes, uh, while at the same time it is able to process uh, very difficult questions, handle them, and give really good answers. So these are some of my favorites. I've spent a lot of time with ChatGPT, and these are my favorite examples. I would like to know about your experience with ChatGPT. Share with me. Um, tell me about your experience, your favorite fuck-ups, your funny stories in the comments below.